What's going on, boys and girls? What's up, world? Austin John Please here, and welcome back to Link's Awakening, episode number six. In the last episode, we... Oh, hang on. In the last episode, we had Bow Wow, and we did a bunch of stuff. We uncovered quite a lot of the map. We still have a little bit more exploring to do. Like, we need to make our way here for a... I believe it's one piece of heart we could get right now, as well as some other stuff. But for right now, we are at the seashell place. This is a neat little thing. In the original game, you would take magic powder and uh, spray it in the face of these trees that look like Deku scrubs, but now you could just talk to them. If I see a weird bowl all by itself in the middle of a cave, sprinkle some powder into it. Pretty good joke on that thing that lives in there. I've read this before, I still don't know exactly what it's referring to. Use your sword to poke at dungeon walls. Oh, I, I already told you about the hollow wall thing. I still don't know about the bowl. Oh, I think this is talking about the little devil. Yeah, that's talking about the little devil. Anyways, let's go talk to Kiki, the monkey. Do you love me? Are you gonna take my bananas and build me a bridge now? Please, Kiki. I'm gonna stop now before I get copyright struck. Kiki calls his monkey friends, and they build a bridge. Wow! That was a very effective building session there, Kiki. We should hire you to fix all of Breath of the Wild. Like, like the world, because the world's broken and stuff. We got a stick! Oh boy! <laughs> this stick is used for that honeycomb that I told you about right there. And we're going to be tackling that as soon as we do this. So we are here at Connellet Castle. Connellet Castle? I don't know. Because down here in this house, who we didn't speak to him before, is Richard. And Richard is a big fan of frogs. Richard wants us to come here and collect five golden leaves. I should have probably gone there first so you could see what that's about. But anyways, we're here now, so we might as well do the thing that he's going to ask us to do. Come back here and chop down this piece of grass. I'm getting some real, some real Link to the Past flashbacks right now. And inside of here, there's some Goombas. If you're low on hearts, be sure to hop on them. Now there's going to be two golden leaves outside of the castle and three golden leaves inside of the castle. These guys right here function a lot like Moblins, but they're stronger. Lift up a rock, throw it at this crow. Kill the crow. He drops a golden leaf. The golden leaves will display at the top left of the screen. Now we're gonna head south. You can stab him in the back. These bushes right here tend to have hearts more often than not, which is really nice. Oh, you're gonna make me sound really dumb right now. Oh, there we go, great. That's all the hearts I needed. Thanks, game. Now, an important thing to note when battling these guys, if you're holding your shield and you walk into them, they don't always do that knockback. See, he has his shield up. As opposed to, if he runs into you, then he gets stumbled. And right here, we are going to be finding the Mad Bomber. May not be his actual name. He only takes one hit, and you can only do it when he pops out of the ground. It's really helpful if you take care of this guy first. Did not want to fight both at the same time. If he pops out of the ground without a bomb, you cannot strike him. But if he does have a bomb, good news for you. And you generally need to be in the middle in order to reach him in time. Oh, great. That was enough. Golden leaf. Okay, you know what? My comment about the hearts, just forget it. Head, head, in, head inside of the castle. Here is a fire skull guy. You can't do anything. In this area, you have two guards and a slime. You have to defeat all of them. Wow, he throws those spears quite often. And one is gonna fall from the ceiling. I wish I had an explanation as to why, but I don't. That's just what it does. Great. Let's head north, ignore these guys. And step on this switch, which will open up the doors, which makes it much easier to travel in and out. Instead, you don't need to go through the underground area. Let's head north up these stairs. Those guys can live. I'm a merciful god. 
Well, hope you have some bombs with you. Should have probably prefaced this area with that, but you should still have four. Bomb only the left one. And a guard will appear. The right one uh, is also a guard, but he doesn't drop anything, so there's not really a reason to fight him. Fantastic. Now we're going to head up, and you see him? He's the reason that we went to go get the secret medicine. And the reason that we make sure to have a fairy bottle already. Because that guy, he can, he can take you down fairly quickly if you're not careful. And while I do have pointers, I don't have, like, a flawless strategy for him. So... My pro tip to you is don't die. Also, this is a type of door that you're going to find now that requires you to pick up a pot and throw it at it. So when he has his large mace, you can block it and my best try or dodge it. Nope, nope. Dodging doesn't work well. If he's spinning it fast, you're not going to get a hit in. Now, in theory, you just hit him all the time, but you just want his mace to get stuck in something. That's your best time to strike. Like, he took, he took like, four, four and a half hearts from me, and I, again, don't have a great strategy. But perfect! We have all of the gold feathers that we need now! Now, let's head outside. We could jump off the building of this castle. <laughs> Sounds like a really dangerous sentence. But not for Link, he does a double backflip. Double front flip. I think it's just called the flip at that point. Oh, I want to show off this, this hole right here. It's just going to constantly spawn these guys. So if for whatever reason, if you needed to make sure that you have a piece of power and an acorn, you can just stand right there and the amount of enemies that you'll kill will rake up your flawless attack meter pretty high and there we go it's like kind of a guaranteed way to get both of those items in less than a minute with all five golden feathers we are going to make our way to a fast travel point i recommend seashell mansion and then we're going to go to the aku prairie ukuyu the ukuyu prairie as soon as you show up here let's head to the right and go up because remember that stick we got well bootleg mario over here has a really genius idea with the stick and you know what he's going to do? He's going to poke a hornet's nest. Or a bee's nest. That's not something you should ever do with a stick. Pro tip for life. Good news is we got ourselves a honeycomb. Now the honeycomb is obviously part of the trade sequence. We went from the banana to the stick over here. And then we went from the stick to the honeycomb over here. And the honeycomb we're going to be using in the animal village, which is located right here. In the meantime, let's make our way back toward where that pedestal was and head south all the way to, to uh, Richard's house right there. Great. Made our way to Richard's house here at the pothole area. Watch out for the potholes. And inside is Richard. Richard is from another game that I'd never played before, and you probably never played before, but this is also the room where there is an Easter egg made by the composer for this game. We're just gonna mash A, because we don't care what he has to say, because we already did it. And he, now we're gonna push this. Fantastic, down here in the underground area, there's a couple slimes we need to kill on our way to this rock, which we then push over, hop over the chasm, and collect the secret seashell. How do I know it was a secret seashell? Because our secret seashell sensor scanner told us that it would be. Head up the stairs. And now we come to this area with absolutely nothing in it, so head down. And this brings us out to Pothole Field. Now, Pothole Field is very dangerous because under a lot of these are potholes. Now, where there's short grass, like right here, there's no pothole. But wherever these are, there can be a pothole. And there's a specific path to follow or you just do that. And jump attack. And then you can just jump up. And that saves you like, I don't know, like two minutes or something. Now there's a piece of heart right there. Not that. There's a piece of heart back there. Oh, no, no. Dang it. There's a piece of heart back there. And uh, you don't supposed to be able to get that till later, but with the right timing, with the right timing, you could just, with the right, with the right timing, 
aligned to the middle, you can hop over and with the right timing and align to this middle, you can hop over with the right timing, you can hop over and with the right timing, you can hop over with the right timing. Got it. You can hop over and get that piece of heart. Now we go from seven to eight. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna include every time that I messed that up, but uh, there was a lot. Anyways, that owl's gonna tell you to dig right here and that's the key. That's the slime key for the slime dungeon. Pick up the rock, hop over. And we use the key right here, which is super convenient. That's all that's needed in order to make our way into the slime dungeon, which you can access by going around this way and then hopping over those stones that we did before. We got that seashell that was right up there. However, there's still a few more places that we're going to travel to to collect items because what kind of 100% walkthrough would it be if we didn't collect every single item as early as possible? It wouldn't be an Austin John Plays walkthrough, that's for sure. So we're gonna fast travel to Dompe's shack. We are going to head north to right where the windfish egg is. Oh, we missed, we missed a seashell in the previous episode. That's why we're here. This is exactly why we're here. Lift up this rock, boom. Seashell. That's fine. We we have the 15 that we needed. It's not like, you know, we were missing any when we came over here. That's the end of the game up there. So instead, we're going to head to the right and up this staircase. That's a ladder. That's a staircase. Into this hole. Um, you are going to be going through this passageway right here. Quite a lot. Not right now, but like toward the end of the game, you're gonna be going into this hole a lot. Anyways, let's knock these guys over, take care of these enemies, and head to this north path. Hit the slime. Faster than I did. Hit the crystal and stand in the safe zone. Nice. Now we're gonna zone out and zone back in. Push this down. Push this over. Attack the crystal, dodge the fireball, hit the slime, get the piece of heart. We don't need to progress any more of the way. I just want to show you something. So if we head out here, we get ourselves a purple ruby. And in the next dungeon, we get the ability to take care of these tent things right here. And that's going to get us the next, or one of the next parts of the trade sequence. That heart on the left, we get that much, much later. So the only thing left is to make our way to the prairie, warp point there. And here on the prairie, we're just going to run around to the entrance of this dungeon, avoiding all those millipedes, cause golly, I sure do hate millipedes. They are the creepy crawlies. Fantastic, and that brings us to the entrance of the slime dungeon. I feel like this episode was very short compared to the last one, but I definitely want to do all of the castle and wh whatever we missed, because there was still a few more things. But this is all we can actually do up until this point, which is fantastic. So by my count, now you should have 13 pieces of heart and 21 secret seashells. Great. Because this episode was so short, I may put out the other one today or the next one for the slime dungeon? Not too sure yet. So if you haven't done so, be sure to leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out. Whee!